Hi, I'm Ryan Poliniak, Customer Account Manager at Western Computer. Today, Ken May, our NAV Functional Consultant, will show how to set up and use workflows in Microsoft Dynamics NAV 2016. Thank you, Ryan. So I'd like to start off with just a really basic, simple workflow to show you guys how you can use all those events and triggers and responses that are available to us right out of the box. So we have a new screen here called Workflows. And this is really designed to take place of the approval process that's existed before. So we can do all the approvals that we could do before and then so many more things. So I'm going to start off with just a really simple out-of-the-box workflow. We'll go ahead and say new. I'm just going to call this my demo workflow. And down here underneath workflow steps, that's where we can see these events and responses. Everything on workflows is really triggered off of when something happens in NAV, then give me some sort of response out of that event. Um, so if we go and we put in our first event, we'll just make a really basic, simple one. Anytime a customer record is changed, I want to do something. So then we have this field here called conditions. So I don't really care if any field on a customer record is changed. I only want one specific field so I can add a condition. So if a customer's credit limit is increased. And then I can say when that credit limit is increased, then I want to do something. So we'll just keep this first one really simple. We'll select a response. These are the different types of responses. And if you notice, some of them are bold, some of them are grayed out. The bold ones our NAV's interpretation of what you're trying to do, it's going to show you bold responses based on these are things that make sense to do. I'm not going to go with any of those bold options. I'm going to just say that I want to show a message on the screen. And then we have the options for our response. So these will change based on what you pick as your response. So when a customer's credit limit's increased, I just want to show them a reminder saying to make sure to email that customer. So this is just a really simple one. Once you create your workflow, you want to go ahead and enable it. So once it's enabled, then it's live and it's in the database. I could directly go straight to my customers and we'll pick any customer from the list. And I'm going to go ahead and just increase their credit limit. So as soon as that record gets updated, I get a message on the screen. Make sure to email the customer just as a reminder. Hey, go email them. So that's really your most simple, basic workflow there is. So I want to make a little more complex one now. And basically, it's just going to be a purchase invoice approval workflow. So whenever I create a purchase invoice, I want that to be approved by somebody and put that document on hold. So if I go into my workflows, I don't need to just make a new one. We have another option up here called create a new workflow from a template. So when I select that, this is going to show me all my available workflows that are already built out for me. And you can see there's workflows in all different departments. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make a purchase invoice approval workflow. So when I hit OK on that, a new workflow is going to get created for me and that workflow is mostly built. These are the standard codes that come in. I like to always change those codes so we don't have any overlap there. And you can see in this approval, our events and responses are a little more complex now at this point. So this gives us the framework, and then we can adjust from there. So this particular one is going to have a couple different responses that happen whenever I send approval for a purchase invoice. It's going to add a restriction to that record so I can't post it. It's going to set the document status to pending approval. And it's going to create an approval request to an approver. And I can change how I want that approval request to be sent. So there's different levels that you can send these approvals. And I'd like this approval request to go directly to the approver that I'm assigned to. So we'll go ahead and do that. So now we're going to enable this workflow. and. I'm going to go ahead and just create a simple purchase invoice. 
So we'll go to purchase invoices, create a new one. And we'll kind of keep this one quick. And now that I've created this invoice, I want to send that off for approval. So that sends an approval request to my approver. And in a second, I should get an email that I can show you guys. And at the same time, too, we're going to log into the tablet client. So this is the tablet client for now. Stan is set up as the approval administrator. So while I'm waiting on that email, we're just going to go ahead. So by sending that approval request out, I can see that Stan has a request to approve a document. So he can go right from his tablet client, he can go from the phone client, he can go from the desktop client and approve those as well. So once I approve that document, I can see that my purchase invoice in NAV has been released. So same approval functionality, but now done through a workflow instead of just the approval setups. And then we'll run through the last one quickly. We can also automate processes and steps as well. I'm going to go ahead and create a third new workflow. And we're going to do that from the template. And this time I'm going to create a purchase invoice workflow. So again, I'm going to rename this. So this is going to do a couple things for us. So we can see when a purchase document is released and that document type is an invoice, I want to post that document in the background. And then we chain events together. So when a purchase invoice is posted, I'd like to create a payment journal. Now I can update these responses as well. So what type of payment journal, what template, what batch do I want to create this payment journal in? So I can select my journal and I can select the bank that I want these journal lines to be created in. And once it gets those batches and journals, I want to create a general journal or a payment line for that invoice. So again, we'll go ahead and we'll enable this. And as soon as the workflow is enabled, then it's live. So now if we go ahead and we create another purchase invoice, so purchase invoice, we'll create a new one. And we'll release that. So you guys can see that document went away as soon as I closed that window. And if we look at posted purchase invoices, all the way down here, I'll have a posted purchase invoice for London Postmaster. So just by releasing that document, it posted the invoice. And I can also look at my journals. And I have a new payment journal created for them as well, so I can automatically pay that. So we can add, remove events from that. But I think that's a fairly good overview of what's available in Workflow. There's a lot more there to play with the templates that they've given you. So with that, we'll turn it back to Ryan. That concludes today's video. Be sure to subscribe to our channel to stay up to date on all latest video releases. Thanks for watching.